Hi creatives, why is social media so overwhelming when you run your own business? When we're busy with client work, it can feel impossible to have time to create thoughtful LinkedIn posts. And then when we actually need to post to get more work, our accounts are basically a ghost town. Let's stop feeling overwhelmed and instead let's create a content calendar that you actually feel excited about creating for and that can be batched in advance. If that sounds like a good plan to you, then let's jump in. Today, we're gonna to talk about how to plan and then eventually create your social media content. But before you do that, it's really important to have a strategy. And that's why we created this video first. So if you haven't watched that, then you can jump and do that now before you continue if you like. I just wanna start off by saying that all of the tips I'm gonna to share today are from research that I've done on the different platforms, but also my own personal experience growing platforms like this YouTube channel. I'm using a template I created in Notion to plan out all my social media content. And if you wanna use the same template, I've created it for free for you. So you can just go down to the description and copy it and use it as well. So the very first step is for us to look at the platforms we're gonna be posting to and think of how frequently we want to be posting. So for example, in my case, I post here to YouTube once a week for long form content, but I also wanna start doing shorts. So I was thinking I would do three shorts a week just to kind of figure out if that's a manageable amount of posting for me. And this is a really important step because you really wanna make sure that you're not overreaching. We really wanna think about creating quality content, not just lots and lots of content. And we wanna think about what is actually gonna work for our time management, for our client work, and just for our mental health in general, because it takes both the actual time to create stuff, but it also takes the mental energy of thinking and planning and doing all this stuff. I'd rather see that you try something for a little bit and then decide, okay, actually I could do lots more than getting super burned out. So in all of these different platforms, they have you know tips and there's reports and even the platforms themselves sometimes come up with official statements for how many times to post or the different formats to post. And it can get really overwhelming and stressful if we're gonna try to follow all of those at once. So I think it's important to find something that's going to work for you and that is going to work long-term. Besides YouTube, I also wanna post a new Skillshare course in July. And I also want to start posting a lot more consistently to Instagram. So now that we know where we're gonna post and how often we're gonna post, let's start adding everything to our actual calendar so that we get an overview of when everything needs to be finished. So initially you will see that my calendar is just full of all the formats. So it might say Skillshare course. And now we need to actually replace that with what the Skillshare course is gonna be about or what the Instagram reel is gonna be about, for example. So for the Skillshare course, I'm creating one about Adobe XD. So I might name it something like Mastering Adobe XD. So how do you actually come up with ideas for everything to write for your actual posts? Because I know this can be a really big sticking point for a lot of people, including me sometimes. So this is what I do. I use a really common marketing strategy called content pillars. And this is basically just different categories of content that I like to structure my posts around. So for YouTube, for example, for long form content, I have one, which is when I create branding projects from scratch. So you see me do the full identity. Another one might be tips for, let's say, Adobe Illustrator or Photoshop or other tools that I'm using. And a third content pillar be videos like this, where I'm talking about how to actually run your design business. Anything from invoicing to actually managing your clients and things like that. So those are three of my different content pillars. And I like to try to spread those different topics out throughout the month. If you have a platform where you're posting really often, let's say you're posting five times a week to Instagram, then you could even make your content pillars correspond to a certain day. So let's say on Mondays, you post client testimonials. On Wednesdays, you post the finished project and so forth. So having these different content pillars, it will help guide you as you're creating ideas for your different posts. So how do we avoid idea droughts? Here are three different ways that I use. The first one is I have a section in the Notion template that you'll see as well, where I have one section for each platform and each content pillar. And this is basically just a way for me to kind of brain dump into it. So when I have ideas, which is usually when I'm not working, so like if I'm taking a walk or if I'm trying to sleep, then I usually have ideas. And that's when I just pop into my Notion template, write them down, and then I can let it go. And then when I go to actually create all my content for that upcoming month, then I already have a couple of different ones to start working with. So that's super helpful. The second strategy is to actually spend time on social media. So grab a drink that you like and then go and like scroll through TikTok or go on Instagram and get lost in the feed. 
I know that it might sound counterintuitive, but it's for research and it's a way for you to start seeing what other creators are doing and get inspired and I'm obviously not saying to copy anyone, but it can be a good idea to say like, oh, they're actually making, you know, videos about different tools that have come out in Illustrator. That's a good idea. I have this tool that I've been using. Let's make a video about that. And you can put your own spin on it based on your clients and your experience and that's going to make it a unique video or post if you like. The third strategy is to read your comments. And this is basically looking at your own comments with questions that people have or comments that they might have for things like, oh, I would love for you to explain this topic or um, having questions around certain things that just keep popping up. And if you don't have any comments for your own posts, maybe you're just starting out or you've not been active for a bit, you can go to your competitors and read their comments because that's gonna be equally helpful if you have the same audience. Okay, so let's recap. So we know which platforms we're posting to, how often we're posting, and we've now decided the topics for all of our different posts. How do we actually make this happen so that all of those posts will go live? So now we actually get to create all of this content and we want to schedule it so that it goes out throughout the month and we don't have to focus on posting, we can just focus on popping in, answering comments, engaging and actually being social on our social media. Before we move forward, I just wanna mention research a little bit here. And it's not crucial for every platform, but I think for platforms like YouTube, for example, that are very search-based, we want to make sure that before we actually script and film and create and edit our video, we wanna make sure that it's something people are gonna search for. For. Is there search traffic for it? Are we going to be able to create a compelling thumbnail for it? So doing all of this prep work before we actually put in all the work of creating the content is super important. And that research could look like actually going to the platform and searching and seeing how many views things have or how many likes or engagements that that post has. And then you could also do things like going to Google Trends or going to other tools that are specific to the platform. Like if you're on YouTube, you might have a TubeBuddy, for example, to look at statistics. So now let's get creating. Most likely you're gonna need at least a couple days to create all of this content for a whole month, but we don't need to have it all at once. So what I like to do is to open my calendar and make sure that I create blocks for when I'm gonna be creating all of the different things, the different tasks I'm gonna be doing, like when I'm gonna film, when I am going to script, when I'm going to create graphics, when I'm going to schedule, so that I have all of those different blocks. So whenever I'm working with my client work or other things, I know that there's dedicated time for that. I spend about one day scripting every month where I'm writing the scripts for both a long form and any short form content that I'm doing. And then I spend about two days filming as well and having those two days when I film it's really nice because I know that on those days I will do my hair and get ready and on the other day uh, I could look a little bit more like my natural state where I don't have to think about it so much then I have a couple more days where I am creating freebies for the newsletter I'm creating static posts I'm creating the descriptions and everything so having all that time scripted out is really good in your calendar Lastly, I spend a whole day basically scheduling everything, which is a very satisfying day, although a little bit tedious. To speed things up a little bit, I use a lot of templates in my business and a lot of kind of structures and ways of doing things that makes things a little bit easier. So for example, today I'm filming and then I'm gonna be putting all of this footage, both the A and the B roll onto my hard drive and then I'm gonna hand that to Jeremy who's gonna be doing the editing. For all of my static posts, I have specific templates set up, so all I have to do is, let's say, drag in a new photo, update the text and the titles, and then export them. And I used to do all of this in Adobe Illustrator, and then I actually switched to Canva. I know, I know Illustrator is a lot better, but I just really enjoyed using the brand kit for all of my clients who I was setting up for, and it has been really easy to use. I know that uh, Adobe Express is basically doing what Canva is doing, but it's an Adobe product, so it's more integrated. So I'm super curious about that. I might explore that. And if anyone else has used Adobe Express or is using it now and have like positives or negatives, I would love to hear it down in the comments. Once I have all of the visuals created, then I go into my calendar again. And where I have all those cards for the different posts with the names now, I'm gonna go and write the description there. This way, when I'm scheduling things in a different tool, I'm gonna to be able to basically just go and copy and paste that in. For scheduling, I use Later for social media platforms like Instagram and Pinterest, and I've been using it for LinkedIn previously as well. And for YouTube, I use their built-in scheduling tool. 
and this is just a preference thing. There are so many like Buffer and Later for example, but there's also basically built-in platforms for every single one. You don't have to spend any money. Basically, if you're spending money on a platform or even using a free version, it's usually the convenience of having all of the scheduling in one place instead of having to go it on the individual platforms. So one last note about being able to keep it all up. Sometimes you won't and that's okay. Having a plan like this is not about being perfect every time. It's much more about having a framework that is going to make you feel confident and happy creating. And I'm sure that if I didn't post a video this week, some of you might notice, but then you would come back next week and it would be fine. Because sometimes we need to take a mental health day, sometimes something happens, we're ill. But that's also why the batching is useful, because if you're away for a week and you have everything set up two or three weeks in advance, you can take those days and you can come back and just catch up a little bit without anyone noticing on your actual social media accounts. I just know it can be overwhelming and I just want you guys to take away all of the positives and none of the stress. I also think it's important to, of course, do your research and look into your audience and think about all your formats and do all of that nitty gritty work, but also keep the things that make you happy creating. If you're posting about things that you're genuinely super excited about, I think that translates and I think that connection becomes a lot more real and a lot more long lasting. So also think about what makes you happy creating. On that note, if you want to go and watch that video where I talked about how to create a sales funnel and the more practical side of things, I'll put that here on the screen for you. Thank you so much for watching. Good luck with your projects and see you next time.